Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today I have a card featuring the new Critters in the Jungle stamp set and dies, and creating a background or a scene by using Distress Ink to color those elements. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and stamp my images from the Critters in the Jungle stamp set. I'm going to use the elephant, the cute little snake, the parrot, and then I'm going to use some grass and vines as well. As, and then a little bit later I'm going to color in some leaves. I needed a, a few additional elements as I started to build the scene. I am going to color in my elephant using some warm gray markers. If you follow my channel or my blog at all, you probably noticed that I have done quite a few elephant themed cards here lately. It seems like there's been a really big influx of elephant themed stamps and things in the industry. And so I kind of dedicated several blog posts and videos to different elephant designs and this just happens to be another one. Even though this card isn't focused on elephants, I thought it was fun to and kind of include that in that whole little series because this is a definitely a very cute one. This one's from Lawn Fawn, of course. And I am using warm gray markers. I tended to go a little bit more on the um, medium gray side here. I've colored the elephants all different ways most of the time using the warm gray markers. Um, sometimes I go a little bit lighter, sometimes darker. This one kind of is sticking to medium to light. Um, the darkest gray I'm using is warm gray 5. And I'm building up the color and blending it out till I have it really well blended and looking the way I want it to. Once I have that and make sure I have everything blended out the way I want it to look, I can go ahead and add some little dot detail. I really like this for animals. Um, you probably noticed that I do that a lot. I think it gives a little bit more of a interesting or realistic type of look. Um, especially for the elephants, I think it really adds a little something to the whole image. I like to start with my darkest and kind of go in with my dark marker, adding some dots where it already is dark, and then I will gradually move out using lighter markers. You don't want the focus of the image to be those dots. You just want it to kind of add to the coloring. Next I'm going to color the snake. He is super fun to color. I used a couple of reds, R22 and 46 for his tongue. And then I am using some yellow green markers in 91, 93, 95, and 97, I believe. And then I am going to color in a little pattern on him. And I'm just kind of making some little squiggly lines all throughout his body. I use the two lighter colors there first, and then I'm going to go, and then I use the darkest color for the, for the pattern, and then I'm going to go over that with my next darkest color. That will help blend it out just a little bit. I don't want to blend it too much. I don't want to lose that design. And then I can go in and add some shadowing and things with my darker colors. Otherwise, I'm not going to blend that out a whole lot. Now I went with some lighter colors. The colors I generally use for greens and things are YG25 and 17. And I started with that and then decided it was a little too greeny for what I wanted to do for this card. So instead of scrapping it, I just went in with YG97 and flicked or feathered in a little bit of darker into those leaves, which darkened them up enough. For the parrot, I am going to use some reds, blues, and yellows. I'm going to make him pretty fun and bright. I'm using R24 and 46. And then I'm going to use B24 and 26 for the blues. For the yellows, I'm using Y11, Y08. I'm going to color in his beak there too. And then I'm going to use YR23 to add just a little bit deeper color to the yellow. Go in and feather in a little bit for the wings with my other colors. Darken it up where I need to and use some browns there for the feet. E55 and 57. I'm going to go ahead and cut out these images now. Before I do that I am going to grab a sheet of paper 
This is already trimmed down to five and a half inches wide and I'm going to use the Lawn Fawn Grassy Border Die to die cut a couple of grassy borders for my card scene here. I'm going to cut everything from white cardstock and then color it in with Distress Ink. So I'm going to go ahead and color in the grass now and I chose to use the Crushed Olive and Forest Moss Distress Ink from Tim Holtz. I'm going to start with the Crushed Olive and it definitely has more of a yellow kind of undertone to it. Um, on its own I probably wouldn't leave it like this for this particular card. Um, I left it to start with because I wasn't exactly sure how dark I wanted to go. Um, I laid out the colored images next to it and kind of worked on it and worked on it trying to get it the way I wanted it to look. But I started with a base of crushed olive for both of the pieces and then I'm going to gradually blend in the forest moss. And I, am, I ended up being really glad that I kept both colors. I think that that undertone helps not make it quite so dark and gives a nice um, variation in color. So it's kind of a two-tone instead of just a solid. I went over the more narrow grass piece a little bit more than the back one. And then I decided that the back one still was a little too light. So I did go back in and add some additional forest moss distress ink all over the surface of this one as well. Once those are all colored in, I'm going to set those over to the side. And then I have a stitched rectangle here that I've die cut from some white cardstock. And I'm going to go ahead and color this in with Tumbled Glass and Salty Ocean Distress Ink. And I'm speeding through this pretty good. It's simply blending in that ink oh, until I get it blended really, really well. I didn't want to have to have you sit there watching me blend the inks. I started with the Tumbled Glass, then I added the Salty Ocean, and then I went back and forth blending those together until I got kind of a smooth transition between the two. You don't want to see a real harsh line where those two inks meet. Once I have those inks blended out the way that I want them to look, even though I'm not using watercolor paper, I probably could have. When I originally started this, I wasn't thinking that I was going to add water, but um, I could have used watercolor paper. Even though I didn't, it's not going to make a difference for this card. I am cutting out my... Um, Critters in the Jungle pieces now before I add that water to that panel. I, it, this was one of those cards where I kind of let it sit for a little bit, trying to decide exactly what I wanted to do. It didn't sit long enough that the ink dried, because you definitely need the ink to still be a little bit um, wet to work with the water, and you'll see that here in a little bit. I'm going to die cut the rest of the pieces that I need now. I'm using a couple of the stitched rectangles to create a really narrow frame to help frame up my scene. So I'm going to go back now to my blue sky panel and just to add some interest to that I'm going to take some water with a paintbrush and just flick it all over the surface. And you will see as that water starts to absorb into the paper it's the ink starts to wick away and there'll be some nice little water droplets all over. It creates a really fun look for the whole background. I'm going to set that aside to dry while I work on a few other pieces for the scene. It doesn't take very long, maybe 10 minutes or so. Now this is where I decided I needed a few additional stamped and colored pieces for to complete that whole scene. So I'm going to stamp the grass plus I'm going to need additional vines. And I'm using those same yellow-green markers for the grass. And I went ahead and colored the vines exactly like I did before. I didn't want to have to redo any of the first ones I did. So I used those kind of two more brightish green colors, but then darkened it a bit with the YG97. Again, I'm going to use the coordinating dies to die cut all of these pieces. Once I'm at this point, I can lay out the elements for my card and kind of see what I still need and go ahead and stamp my greeting so I make sure and leave room for it. I'm going to stamp that on the, the uh, one grassy border. Now that the ink is dried, I'll stamp 
the greeting with Versamark ink and sprinkle it on some white embossing powder and then I can heat set that. The white will really pop then off of the dark green grass. I'm going to go ahead and build up what I have so far for my scene. I'm going to lay that frame on my card base so that I can line up my blue sky panel and go ahead and adhere that right to my card. And then I can adhere both of the grassy borders. I am going to have to trim those. They are a little wide. I'm just going to go ahead and pop that in place, line up one side with the bot and the bottom, and then I can carefully just trim off any of that excess. I will have to do the same thing for the other grassy border. I uh, trim those longer than what I ended up needing, and I don't want those to get in the way of my frame. So I'll trim off the excess there for this one as well, and go ahead and attach any of my elements that I already have done. So I will tuck the elephant there into the grass, and then I can tuck the snake and the little die cut piece of grass as well. Since I'm ready to do that, I am going to go ahead and attach my frame using a little foam adhesive. This is just going to raise that frame up a little bit so that it's higher and it will frame up the scene really nicely. Because the frame is really narrow and the foam tape is pretty wide, I am cutting it into about thirds so that none of it is visible and I'll just put it around all four sides of my frame and then pop it into place there on my card. Now I'm going to tuck the snake and the grass there right underneath the edge of that frame and glue those in place. And I'm using some acrylic blocks, something heavy, to hold those down while the glue dries. I'm using the zig glue pin to attach some of these smaller pieces. Especially with these vines up here, the zig glue pin works great. So moving my blocks around to hold things down while the glue dries. I'll tuck some of these vines. I really wanted the vines to kind of have a more natural look. I didn't want them to just connect one from another. So I'm placing them under and over. And this is, once I had attached this third one, I realized I really needed one more to kind of get to the other side of the card. So once I have this attached, I am going to go ahead and stamp an additional vine plus a few leaves. For the parrot, I'm going to use some foam adhesive to attach him sitting right there along the vines. And he adds a nice pop of color to the top of the card. So there's my additional vine, plus I stamped several leaves and another little piece of grass. I thought I needed just maybe another little piece of grass on that other side of the greeting along the bottom of the card. I'm using those darker yellow-green markers in 91, 93, 95, and 97 again, kind of feathering out. I colored the whole base with my lightest color and then went in with my second lightest and then a little bit darker and I could have left them kind of maybe like right here but I ended up going in with my darkest marker and just very lightly kind of doing that center seam and just feathering out a very very tiny bit not a lot and I really liked how they turned out. I'll go ahead and die cut all of these now with the coordinating dies and then I can go ahead and complete the whole scene for this fun jungle themed critter card. Now I am trimming little bits of the leaves off so that they have a flat side. Because I've already attached that frame with foam adhesive, this is going to allow them to lie flush with the sides of the card. So it almost looks like they're tucked underneath and that way I don't have to worry about lifting up that frame since I've already attached it. So I'll go ahead and trim a little bit off of each of these, add all of those in the corner so that it looks like there's a, a large tree over on that left side and the vines are kind of going from that tree probably to a tree over 
outside of the scene on the right side of the card. I'll tuck that other piece of grass there along the left side on the bottom. There's that last little piece for that tree. And my card jungle scene is all finished. Thanks for watching this video showcasing the Critters in the Jungle stamp set and dies from Lawn Fun. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.